Glass is the latest movie from writer-director M. Night Shyamalan, who directed Unbreakable and Split, which is the movies that Glass is a sequel to. And while I really, really don't like this movie, there are some things that I do like about it that I would like to address before I really get into things here, because whenever I hate a movie or strongly dislike a movie, as I did with this one, I do want to get the positives out of the way first, so it doesn't seem like I'm just completely ripping on this movie. I specialize in those individuals who believe they are superheroes. <laughs> Good for you. Some of the positives for this movie are holdovers from Split, the cinematography being a big one for me. The same cinematographer that did It Follows and Split is back for this one, and I really loved what he did here. There's a lot of great camera movements, there's a lot of great angles, there's a lot of great uh, color grading. I, I really love the presentation of this movie. It just looks very nice. And the music as well is another holdover from Split. The same composer has come from that to this. And I really like the music again. The music has some really great tense moments. It has some really nice piano moments. And it's kind of infused with the Unbreakable and Split soundtrack as well with a few new things for this movie. I think it worked really well. Whenever it was used, it felt grand, and, and I think it worked pretty well. And I think the performances are all pretty good here, too. Bruce Willis is doing the best he can. Samuel L. Jackson is really good. Uh, James McAvoy is really good. Anya Taylor-Joy. Everyone in this movie does a pretty dang good job, honestly. And my first issue with this movie, and kind of my biggest one, is how much exposition is here. There is numerous scenes where characters will practically sit down and look at the camera and explain exactly what something means or exactly what's about to happen. And that got incredibly tedious near the end. My bones break easily. I've had 94 breaks in my life. But you have an extraordinary IQ. Because there are cer certain things that are introduced in this movie and then they just explain them. So there's no room for you to get involved in the storytelling at all. Because it literally just takes you and holds your hand and goes through step by step everything that's happening. Except for certain things that I don't think it knows how to explain. So when the movie isn't holding your hand it just doesn't make any sense. So there's this weird imbalance with this movie, particularly near the end when it's just, there's so much exposition. At the, in the end, it reveals that there is a secret organization that is killing or hiding superheroes from the rest of the world. And then there, that's one twist. And then there's another twist where we find out that Samuel L. Jackson was using the cameras in this sanitarium to record Bruce Willis and James McAvoy fighting and being superhumans. And he sent that footage out to the world and showed that superheroes are among us and that all the other superheroes need to rise up. Hey everyone, Editor Rendon here. I forgot to mention this in the review, but I am very confused about this scene in particular because if Sarah Paulson was trying to keep the world from finding out about superheroes, why did she install a hundred cameras around the entire sanitarium? What would be the point of that if she was intentionally trying to hide or kill these superheroes? I, I, I do not understand why she would mandate to have this many cameras if she didn't want these superheroes to be found out. Doesn't really make that much sense. Okay, back to the review now. Goodbye. Throughout this entire process, it painstakingly explains every single beat through this ending. It says there's a secret organization and it shows like these little clover, like it's like a clover on everyone's wrist. And then you, you go, oh, what is this? Is what's going on? This is some kind of weird uh, organization. What's going on? They're, they're killing these superheroes. They kill James McAvoy, they snipe him, and then they drown Bruce Willis in a, in a pothole, which was hilarious. And I went, oh, that's, what is this? What's going on? And then almost the next scene, it cuts to Sarah Paulson, who is apparently the leader or a high ranking member of this secret organization. And she literally says, I know my duty. My duty is to keep superheroes from the public. And 
try to convince them that they're not superheroes. And if I can't convince them, then use the machine. And if I can't do that, then we have to eradicate them. And I was like, thanks for explaining. Wow, that was, that, you know, that would have been an interesting thing to just leave me questioning. But no, now I know exactly what it is. And then you, before this superhero encounter happens between James McAvoy and Bruce Willis, you see Samuel L. Jackson typing on this computer, on, on the security computer. And then right after Sarah Paulson gives her monologue explaining the secret organization, she goes down to that same computer and asks the guard what Samuel L. Jackson did and then explains to the audience exactly what happened. She says, oh, he used the computers, he used all the cameras to, to record him so that he could send this to the world. And then she gets pissed and I went, thanks for explaining that. I couldn't figure it out on my own. My name is Patricia. I have no question. There are two dozen identities. I'm Mary Reynolds. Por favor, senora. We almost got you, bro. That live in that body with you. The beast is coming any minute now for you guys. And not only do they explain random details like this, but they explain people's backstories for absolutely no reason. They take Bruce Willis's kid in and Sarah Paulson looks at him and says, I know that your mom died from this very specific form of cancer and you can't you want bruce willis to be a superhero so that you can deal with that and i was like thanks for explaining what happened to her instead of just leaving it open to the audience to fill in why can't you just do that and then anya taylor joy comes in to the sanitarium and talks to james mcavoy at one point and she says i locked my uncle up it was wrong what he did to me and i and i was like why did you explain that in Split, it shows that her uncle was kind of uh, a pedophile towards her and abusive. And then it just explains that she put her, him away in this movie. Why? Why did you need to explain that? And why was she telling James McAvoy that? James McAvoy wouldn't know that. This nine-year-old that's living inside James McAvoy's body had no idea that her uncle was abusive to her. So why did she tell him that? What was the point of her going and telling him that? There is absolutely no reason for this. And the ending kind of personifies that. Like I uh, explained how it's ex over explaining things. And there's like three different twists where you find out that Kevin Wendell Crumb's dad was on the same train that Bruce Willis is on, where he was the only survivor. Who cares? And, and then it has the twist of there's a secret organization. And it has the twist of... Um, Samuel Jackson sent the footage out and beat the secret organization that we found out existed five minutes ago. So why would that, why would I care about that? You need to set things up so I care about them and setting up the secret organization five minutes before you topple them is not how you should do that. You cannot have something set up and then immediately paid off like that because it's not satisfying. It doesn't feel earned, it feels rushed, and it feels stupid and lazy. It's so bizarre, and then it uses it to fake have a message at the end, like, oh, uh, everyone needs to rise up and be themselves. Everyone needs to be the best person that they can be. And I was like, why are we having a stupid message at the end of a comic book movie where James McAvoy was punching Bruce Willis and throwing him against a car? I don't need this. This is not a cartoon. This is the real world. No way. And yet, some of us still don't die with bullets. Some of us can still bend steel. And I don't understand why this even exists. I mean, Unbreakable was a great character study where you have great arcs, you learn about these characters, you see how shambled their life is and they come together. And then Split has just an interesting story where things are slowly revealed and you find out this and that and it makes it interesting. This one is just about a couple characters in an insane asylum and they're told that they're insane and even though there were two movies previously that showed that they clearly weren't. The characters don't grow, the characters learn nothing, and even when it tries to have arcs where the characters question their superpowers, it doesn't feel earned, it doesn't feel like it matters, it doesn't feel like it has weight because of those other two movies. You've already seen them do supernatural things, and then this movie's like, eh, they're not though. We're gonna try and 
pretend like they're not so that they question their reality. It's just so boring. And no one, again, no one learns anything. There's no characters that grow. There's no characters that are better in the end. It's just, they just die and then it's over. It's so stupid. And in the end, this movie just doesn't justify its existence when Split and Unbreakable already exist. And you can just watch those. This one doesn't do anything with the characters. It doesn't do anything with the world. It doesn't do anything at all. And so it is completely useless, purposeless, worthless is a great word for it. I give it a four out of 10. You don't need to see it.